So can you just say a few words in the microphone if I yeah, can hear you? Yeah, this is Todd McFarland. We're doing an interview with okay, a world-famous podcaster from France. <laughs> All right, so uh, everyone's talking about the Spawn uh, movie news uh, that uh, went out uh, two, two, two days ago. Yeah. But I, I want to talk a little bit about the comics first. Okay. Because it, we're celebrating right now the 30 years of Spawn. And, and, and uh, Image Comics. And Image Comics. Yeah. And, uh, and you've been developing the, the cold, so-called Spawn universe from, uh, since uh, one year now. Yeah. So how is it going uh, right now? How, how, uh, how do you uh, see uh, the, the Spawn uh, like franchise? Uh, do, you, do you think that we can call Spawn a franchise right now? Uh, well, the, the the goal 30 years ago uh, was to, you know, help kickstart a new company with a group of people um, and see how that would work out. Um, we're now 30 years into it. Image Comics has now made its indelible mark on the history of our American superhero industry. And we now have... 50 to 70 books a month that we publish from people who go, yeah, that's a good model, right? That that thing that you guys tried 30 years ago is still alive and well, mm -hmm. right? We didn't, and honestly, we didn't really know how long it would last per se. I, I knew personally there was going to be an image comics forever because even if it all failed, I was going to put an image logo on Spawn till I died. So there's going to be at least one book. Mm -hmm. um, But, at, at, but 1992 at the same time, we each, besides starting Image as a whole, we had to come up with our own characters, uh, you know, and that's also the same year as Spawn, mm -hmm. the, the comic book. The goal way back then, and you know, a lot of us had a lot of momentum at our back. The goal for me was simply, could I create a character, stick with it, and have a character at some point that possibly could live past my lifetime, right? That's, to me, that's the goal because it means that they don't care about you at some point, they care about your character, right? Um, and we've seen this obviously with thousands of characters that their original creators are now not on this planet, um, but we still follow their characters. So, Just for me, that was that was a personal goal to do it. Now, how do you how do you get there? I I I I didn't get distracted with doing other comic books. I you know uh, some of the people uh, the Image founders had their studios, and then some of us, Jim Valentino and Eric Larson and myself, we we decided to do one character, not group books. Those are complicated. One character, one book, and then just stick with it um and i didn't want to even do mini series or one shots till about issue number 50 because i wanted to just pound that logo over and over and over and over look i, I knew issue number one was going to sell simply by the fact that it's that spider-man artist that we like yeah you were superstars at the time also yeah the, so i the, came from spider-man i'm at the top of my game and they're going oh my god i like the spider-man artist todd He's going and doing this new book. I don't even know what it's called. Spam, prawn. I don't know what it's called, but it's got Todd's art in it. And, we, and that's why we were there. After issue number one, two or three, then I knew that the character needed to be entertaining enough that they'd only put up with the art for so long if, the, if they didn't like the character. They thought the character in the story was sort of dumb. Um, And so I put my head down and try to do what we could do. And, you know, and then in a couple of years, you know, grab a young fledging Greg Capullo to come on and do artwork. And he stayed with me for 80 issues all the way up to issue 100. And, who, and he's a way better spawn artist than I am. Um, and now we're up to issue 335, 30 years later, and still going, right? I mean, I, I, I still think I've got 30 more years in the tank, which means I'm only halfway through whatever my career is right now, right? A lot of people like to say a lot of nice things about it, but I, 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 I think I'm only halfway through. So still lot, lots in the future. But so are you, uh, because you're thinking that uh, you want the character to outlive you, uh, but uh, do you have like a, an ending planned uh, ever for I, the I, I had an ending from day one. Here's, here's the thing. 
you, you hope you never write it. And here's why. Because the only reason you ever write an ending is it because people don't want any more. So the question is, what's the end of Spider-Man? What's the end of Batman? What's the end of Superman? Maybe somebody had it, the original creators, maybe they had it, but the goal is never having to write that story because it means like, I wanted to have the ending in case by issue 12, nobody wanted to read Spawn anymore. And then I go, okay, I'll just do a big double-sized issue. I'll do a big fancy ending to it and we'll be out and I'll go create another character. But the goal should always be you start a character and you never, ever tell the ending of What's the end of Charlie Brown? What's the end of Asterix, right? I mean, <laughs> it, like, we hope we never see it, right? So. All right. So I, I, I've seen in a previous interview that uh, you wanted to do the Spawn's universe with Gunslinger and the Scorch uh, because you wanted uh, to have more pages to make a uh, live, uh, to, to, uh, to depict the lives of this ca all the characters you created. But you could have done it before because yeah. there, uh, there have been a lot of many, many characters you created way be yeah. before. So yeah. why, why did you do it in uh, 2021? I don't know. It's a good question. And, and it's a fair question. The answer is I probably took too long. <laughs> like Todd, if you're going to expand it, you could have done it 10 years ago and it would have worked maybe. Uh, but I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm very cautious about each sort of business step that I take. And I don't think that doing something because it'll work and it'll make you money is, is a compelling enough reason, right? I, I, I see that a lot. Hey, Todd, you could do this. And it's like, why? Well, you know, you could sell a ton of it. Okay, but other than that, other than I could make money, why are we doing it, right? Because, you know, I'm fortunate enough now in my career, I've got money. And the least interesting piece of any conversation I have with anybody in business is the money aspect of it. I've got money, right? I'm good. So why are we doing it? Creatively, why are we doing it? And, and so we had talked at the very beginning of Image of each of us cr creating our own characters and then crossing them over and creating that universe sort of like at the, way, way, way at the beginning. And it would have been super awesome. Um, I don't know what would have happened when Rob Liefeld left and Jim mm -hmm. Lee went to DC, I, how we would have unraveled that. So. I guess in hindsight, it's a good thing we didn't co-mingle because it would have been, it would have been a problem. Mm. Um, so in the back of my head, it was always there. And then as we got close to issue 300, which is still a long ways down, yeah. I just want, I've, you know, momentum was coming back to the books. Uh, we had a little bit of news that was sort of happening on the uh, Spawn movie front. And we were going to set a record with issue 301. And I went, this I'm going to I'm going to use this moment to do what I've been threatening in my head for decades to do, which is it's time to expand. It's time to expand. So there's two covers in issue 300 and 301 that Jerome Pena and I did. And those were the teasers, right? Because people were going, why did you draw those covers with all those characters and not in this book? And, and the answer was, well, you just wait. Right. <laughs> um, and so 301 is the moment that creates the opening that now allows me to do what is, I'm just dubbing right now, the Spawn's universe. That then, I mean, that book comes out in 2019 and then in 2021, Spawn's universe, King Spawn, the number one selling book last year in America, a gunslinger uh, that set a record for, for a new title and a new character uh, and, and Scorch uh, set another record for a team book. It's a book, yeah. Um, so they all set a record, they all got out of the gate. But even still, there's still hundreds of characters that still need breathing room. And, you know, I'm going to be down in Artist Alley soon if I can find some people to help me either expand the monthlies, do one shots, do mini series, do stuff so that I can sort of tell more stories. Okay, that's, so the, the Scorch, Genslinger, King, and King Spawn are not the end of the Spawn's universe. You plan to do more? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, no, there, there will be... An, there will be a, slow rollout expansion of like a so, miniseries or one shots yeah 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 you and might. some monthly you know as, as we, you know when we find the right character with the right art team and the right writing team then it's like 
okay, let's put that in into play, right? Okay, so, so. also all, all the other monthly uh, series. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so okay. So it's not going to it's not going to stop. Uh, yeah, but, I, but but again, I don't want to do it fast. No, right? sure. I mean, it took me a long time. To I'm start. not going to write that you're going to do it right no, away. No, 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 you could, no. No, the plans are there. The plan. But I, I want to do it in a methodical way, and I'll probably do it too slow. <laughs> just like I did when I started the universe, right? So, like I said, I'm very cautious about about expansion. Okay, I had another question about the the, the, the record selling titles that you that you did because you 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 put a lot of variant covers. Uh, yep. So it you, you, we know that in the uh, American market it helps yep. uh, to uh, to elevate the, the number of orders. Yeah. Uh, but afterwards, you, you can see that the number is going down because there are yep. not less. But in in the I think it's one is a Kingspawn uh, one. Uh, in the post phase, you you were uh, telling about all the cover variants that you had for the, for for these uh, these numbers, and I couldn't figure if you uh, thought that it was a good thing for the industry or if it was just uh, you know something that uh, helps uh, artificially uh, help the orders. So, what's your your point of view on the whole variant cover system? Uh, it's, it's interesting because I'm not a big fan of variant covers, right? I just I, I, again, I I I think it's pushing the envelope a little bit, comma. But there's a big audience down there that likes them, right? Mm. So at some point you just go, no, I'm mean, like, no, because when I don't do it on my other books, they're like, how come we don't do more variant covers? How come we don't do this? How come we don't do retailer covers? How come we don't? And I'm like, you know, I, I, I usually do like two covers on each book and I, and I think that's cheating, right? So when you do more than two, like on the number one, I'm always sort of hesitant uh, of like pushing the envelope. They seem to like it, right? They seem to like it as long as I think you sort of contain it, right? Because mm -hmm. like even here, we had to come up with a list on the Batman Spawn book mm -hmm. of how many we were going to do. And there were some conversations about whether we do retailer, you know, exclusives. And, but then it blows up a lot, mm -hmm. right? I mean, years ago, I think in 2019, uh, Detective Comics with retailer and center, there was like 72 covers, right? And to me, for me personally, it was like, nah, that's that's way, too many. Way, mm -hmm. I, I don't I, like where do you even begin, right? So, um, you know, you're going to get, and, and I've told people that do comic books at Image Comic Book, you know, you're going to get an inflated number for number one. The question is, What's your number at number six? That's way more compelling, right? Any issue number one is going to get a number, right? Mm -hmm. That's like opening up your movie on the weekend in the cinema. Okay, it's how are you doing on weekend two and three and four? That's going to tell you whether you have something that has some strength. So the sales for all four of those books, I thought would, I thought there'd be sort of a top and a bottom to them. But they seem to be buying them as a group because the number for all four of those books every month now is al they're almost within a small percentage of being the exact same number. Nobody's differentiating Spawn from Scorch, from Gunslinger, from King Spawn, which is good. That means you're buying them as a group. Yeah. Um, the I also am the only one that has a comic book that sells for two dollars and 99 cents right so i'm not trying to pick people's pocket because if i was i wouldn't be charging two dollars and 99 cents and i went to a cardboard cover that cost me more money too right so i make less on my my comic book but the industry there's a lot of people who i i think don't even don't even know that the comic books open up They just, they're buying it for the cover and the cover artists like, oh my God. And then every now and then they go, oh my God, these things actually open up, right? Uh, so it's an odd thing. Uh, it, 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 it wasn't what I did when I was younger, but it, it just what's happening in our industry right now. So I'll All let right. others decide whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Okay. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the origin story of the new Batman Spawn book? Because uh, it's almost uh, 30 years or so since uh, the, the two uh, first crossovers. So uh, why did it take so long to uh, get back uh, into this uh, kind of uh, industry crossovers? Um, because when we did it at the beginning, it was right at the beginning of Image Comics and the enthusiasm for our company and everything was out there. So we were trying to come up, as I was constantly trying to come up with big events, right? You have to let enough time go by for that 
not to feel like you're just going back to the well again, and that there's now a whole new generation of collectors that weren't even born, right? I mean, it was 25 years ago. So if you're, and I assume that from four and under, you don't even, you don't remember. So if you're 29 years old or less, then you don't, you have no recollection about that first book coming out. All right, you're now 30 years old, okay? It's time to give you a book to get excited about, right? Instead of reading about it, instead of hearing your uncles and your dads talk mm -hmm. about when they, oh man, when Image came out and when they did that crossover and that big event book over there that Marvel and DC, it's, they want their equivalent stories, right? So let's just give them their Batman spawn. Instead of worrying about hearing dad's folklore, let's, let's give them their version of it, right? I mean, arguably, uh, Hollywood does this all day long. Yeah. You take a movie that's 30 years old, kids don't care, but you give the new version of it, man, that's cool. That's a cool movie, right? All of a sudden it becomes theirs. But is this also appealing to the older readers that were there for the first crossover? And I think like, I, Because sure. there's also, you know, a whole 90s uh, uh, it should, nostalgia. Uh, right. Because it's going to look good. It's got some fun characters in it. Greg Capullo's artwork on it. My Incan, we did that for 80 issues and it's, it's going to be an event book. Like who, like it spawned Batman 2A guys crossing over, multi-company crossover with two big creators that people like. And they've got some bad guys in here that people like, why, why, why would you pass it up? You might, you don't have to buy all the covers, <laughs> but I bet I can get you to buy one. Why wouldn't you? If you're a comic book superhero, comic book collector, why wouldn't you buy it, right? Like, I don't know, it's, I, I would. But I, we're trying to do a book that when, we were 16 years old, we would have wanted to collect. So we'll hit every single young person and I'm hoping the old people go, man, the first time they came out, that was cool. Let me see if the second one's is cool. <laughs> They're gonna buy it just out of curiosity anyways and hopefully enthusiasm. Yep. Okay, it seems to me that uh, uh, getting Greg Capullo on the book was all, all logical because of your work on Spawn and because he, he has been doing a Batman for uh, six years afterwards. So uh, right. was it your first choice uh, already when you- Oh yeah, yeah? There was no, no, there was no second choice. Like you go, if you're gonna do a Spawn Batman, man, who's the best Spawn artist I can think of? Greg Capullo, okay, check. Who's the best Batman artist? Greg Capullo, right? So when we wanted to do this 10, I think in 2006, Greg Capullo hadn't drawn any Batman yet. It actually works out, I think, better because Greg has now made his mark as one of the preeminent Batman artists of mm -hmm. this generation. And to some people, the best Batman artist they've ever seen. So you go, you got the best Batman artist and the best Spawn artist, and it's the same guy. It's the same guy in the book. Like, I don't know if I was a comic book collector. I, I those are the moments you go, what? Like, I had artists that drew a couple of different books, and if they said that artist was going to do a crossover between those two books, I'm like, that would have been heaven for me, right? So, you don't have to overthink like how this works, which is why when we made the announcement at, D at uh, San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. We at right out of the gate, we only said five words. Batman, Capullo, Spawn, McFarland, December. Done. That mm. that's eighty-five percent of our sales. Done. We could have said nothing since then, and we still would have got eighty-five percent of what we're gonna get. Now we're just trying to see if we can market and get another fifteen percent out of it. But like I was in. If they told me when I was a kid, right? John Byrne, Chris Claremont, Justice League of America, X-Men. December, I'm in. I'm in. I wouldn't have said who's the bad guy. How many pages is it? What's the cost? I was in. That was it. I'm going, my favorite team is doing all those cool characters. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. John Byrne is the best X-Men guy, and he's now doing Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman. Oh, my gosh. So yeah. this it's just that, right? I think we, I think we forget that we were young collectors. And we just want to remind people what it's like to be young and enthusiastic collectors. Okay, thank you. And last question, uh, just about about the movie, because yep. we know that you've got now uh, three new uh, writers. And uh, but uh, we, I, I've been writing about the, this uh, comic book since uh, 2017, I think, yep. so five years. So what's taking so long uh, uh, in, in, on the here's inside? Here's the odd uh, answer to that question. It's actually not taken that long in Hollywood time, <laughs> like five years as frustrating as it is to me, because I turn out a book every 30 days mm. and I do toys every other week. 
right? So, but the process of making movies that take years is normal. It's the piece that I just scratch my head. I don't get that city. I don't know how they make a living waiting years in between yeses, right? So, but I could show you a list as long as your body of projects that have been waiting as long or longer, right? I'll, I'll show you projects that have been waiting 10 years. So do some turn over in a couple of years? Yes, but that's once you're established, right? Once you've got the franchise, then yes, you can do an Iron Man movie every two, three years if you want, because it's established. So hopefully all the pain, settled, all the pain <laughs> is up here at the front. And once we get going, then it won't be five, six years in between each movie. It actually, the pace will then go, oh, it's a proven commodity. We should be doing this on a regular basis. So why it takes so long, I don't know. It's a mystery of Hollywood, but it's sadly a bit of a norm. And do you still think on going about the Joe's approach that you described in the previous interviews or is um, it going we, differently? Everybody still wants to do a nice sort of moody show. We don't want to do uh, special effects, uh, superhero, $200 million special effects extravaganza. So, um, but again, I, you know, we've got the new writers and they've got their viewpoint uh, and they've got some great ideas. And so my, my job isn't to say, hey, here's what I want. Everybody's got to do what I want. They're pros. They're A-list Hollywood talent, right? And and just like when we do comic books, they, people like Greg Capullo and I do what we want to do. I have to be able to let these people do what they're great at, right? They're, they've been nominated for big awards, won big awards. They know what they're doing. And, and my job is to be part of the team that helps get it across the finish line, right? Because look, at, at the end of the day, the reality of it is that we all acknowledge 99 and a half percent of the people, hopefully, that see this movie globally will never have written have read one single issue of a, a Spawn comic book. We can't be we can't be so loyal to the comic book that we're basically losing moviegoers, right? Like there's people in France and in Spain and in Barcelona and the Czech Republic and Poland, and we're gonna get those people to go to this movie and they may not even know that there's a Spawn comic book. That's okay. What they will know is, oh, that guy wrote The Joker? I went to that movie. That guy wrote Captain America. That guy won an Academy Award for that. That guy produced the the movie Get Out. That guy co-created Venom. Oh my gosh. And they're not going to really care about our names. They're going to care about the movies or the characters that they've seen movies of. That's what's going to get them. And then we hopefully make a good trailer. And then they go to the movie, right? And and then they'll walk out and go, what? It's a comic book. I didn't know that, right? The world, of, the world, the world is a big place, right? It seems different when you're looking down here today, but the world's a big place and we have to acknowledge we got to make a great movie, period. And that's what the goal is for everybody. Okay, thank you very much, Todd. Yeah. All right.